Okay, so it's July the 6th, 4.11 p.m. in the afternoon at uh, University of Alaska Fairbanks. And the research team is here to talk about uh, progress. So, uh, Fawn, why don't you tell me a little bit about what you're doing at Nabucus uh, and, yeah. uh, and, what you, and what you're planning on doing tomorrow. Uh, yes, uh, my result is uh, I got uh, two models. One is composite and uh, another is no composite. And uh, I began to add more link, and the uh, the data is began to converge. Uh, and I think uh, I should uh, uh, get one hand, cal hand calculation result to compare, so I can know how accurate my result it is. So uh, what I want you to do now is to ensure to give me a plot mm -hmm. of a of the number uh, of the percent accuracy against the number of elements. Okay. So the fineness of the mesh, basically, not the number of elements. So the fineness of the mesh, so we know yeah. approximately what we need to be doing in terms of putting together an accurate solution mm -hmm. to being able to model a beam to a slab. Okay. Um, then the next step, the next step after this, mm -hmm. will be to take and put two beams yeah. with, uh, with the slab mm -hmm. so we can put a load and see does, does the slab and beam system respond when when it's a non-symmetrical load, for example. Okay. Does the beam slab system respond favorably? Yes. And and do the again one one and the same. Yeah. We're going to have to in the plan view mm -hmm. look at the element refinement, yeah. uh, or mesh refinement, if you will. Yes. To to determine what kind of accuracy we need to develop to get good results. Okay. All right. Yes. Okay. Uh, so you need to do a. Uh, comparison against the hand calculation. Check Steve's hand calculation. Make sure that's correct. Yes. Then uh, compare your solution with a rough mesh. Yes. With um, compositely, mm -hmm. a rough mesh non-compositely, mm -hmm. and then of course uh, fine meshes and, 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 and cha change the mesh size so we can uh, theoretically mm -hmm. uh, determine mm -hmm. what kind of mesh refinement we need to for a certain degree of accuracy of our solution. Yes. Okay. Sure. And I would do that um, not just for transverse load, mm -hmm. but in plane load, and maybe even uh, shrinkage and uh, temperature. Okay. So we can get a handle on is the solutions sensitive to one kind of loading, mm -hmm. the mesh refinement that is, versus another kind. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. And so, when do you think? So, what's your plan for tomorrow? Uh, I, tomorrow, I think I should get a hand calculation for uh, composite, and uh, I try to get a non composite, and uh, begin to okay. get a calculation. Okay. So, okay. Okay. So, would it be fair to say that maybe by Wednesday yeah. or so, we ought to be able to put the two floor system together? Uh, or is that too soon? Uh, I think it's too, too soon. soon. Yeah. yeah. Okay. When can we start thinking about putting these two floors together and start looking at? the behavior of, of this system. When do you think we can start doing that? Yeah, um, for, for the model, I just uh, I already put them together. And, uh, I, so I, know that, I know you have. Yeah, so we need to put everything we, we, we do in the model. I think uh, for, my, uh, for my model, is I just uh, get the link together, so then we can get the, see the behavior. But, uh, so, yeah. so I guess one thing I'm going to do to simplify the, yeah. your life a little bit mm -hmm. is I'm going to ask you to just deal with mm -hmm. the, two, the two floors yeah. and the beams and girders mm -hmm. uh, as if they were compositely active. Okay. I mean, we won't deal with a non-composite yet. Yeah. Uh, granted, you're doing that in your hand solution and, 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 and these simple solutions, and we'll have that ready. Yes. But I think our first step will be to look at it as if it's behaving compositely. Yes. Okay. And if we can, mm -hmm. go to the drawings and make sure that our links match up with the um, mm -hmm. Nelson stud spacing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, you know what I'm talking about? Okay, yes. So, that, so we have a, an understanding of how that distribution matches up to your model. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right? Okay, yeah. So, do you think, so when do you think we can actually do that two-floor two floor system? Um, I think uh, for composite, and uh, I think this Friday is okay because... This Friday? Yeah. Okay. Because we, uh, I already have the ge geometry and uh, everything, I just define the link, then we can see the data load. So we can run the case. And assuming that goes fairly well, yeah. uh, if we were to look at another two-floor system, yeah. how, how much time do you think it's going to take you to put 
since you've already put a two floor system together, yeah. how much time does it take to put another one together? Uh, 12, 13 is the same layout. So if we just get 14, 15, so the same layout, I think one floor is only like uh, at most two days. Yeah, because they are same layout, I just uh, copy and get them together, link and check no, not, nothing wrong. So it's uh, okay. most two days. All right. Floor. But, so, uh, so it's probably yeah. wise uh, once you've got that hand, I mean, uh, that solution of the two store, the two floor system. Yeah. Then for us to put the mo all the models together, yeah. just have them there, kind of like in a filing cabinet. Okay, so we're ready to do the, the study of the next one. Uh -huh. Pull out the next one, then the next one. Since yeah. copying them yeah. and and making some minor changes to get them ready to run yes. should should be the place where we are, right? Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. Then then the next point of the puzzle uh -huh. is okay. Once we've got all that put together, what kind of effort is it going to take us to put the whole system together, all 47 stories? Then, because you're pulling these out at two floors at a time. Yeah. You know, if we put them all together. All together, I think uh, if they are like. Uh, since we can, I'll be able to copy those right into that file, into yeah. that whole model. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, for uh, because uh, some floor is same, some floor is different. I, so I know if that. If we got the floor plan and we define the beam and got this plan, we just combine them like uh, t uh, two days on one floor. But uh, if we, we need to draw one, one floor's layout, I think it takes like uh, three or four days because uh, uh, for the upkills, a uh, little bit different with sub-2000. Sub-2000, they can pull out the geometry from the, the database, but uh, upkills, there are no data database I need to But can you, write, can you write a program to create a database? Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, there, there has uh, a software to Okay. to write uh, the geometry, but uh, it's time, uh, time consuming a little bit, not automatically linked together, so so I need to draw each cross section, so it's uh, take, uh, take some time. Uh, well, I'm just thinking you could write maybe a little program in C or, or yeah. maybe in a spreadsheet or something that would create that database that you would need in Abacus rather than having having uh -huh. to enter it by hand, yeah. you know, because uh, uh -huh. uh, you should be able to do that, I would think. Yeah, maybe I have a look. So yeah. is that possible? To well, I mean, if particularly if you got more than one set of floors to deal with this. I mean, yeah. if you only had one, yeah, then uh, then taking a couple of days doesn't make makes make some sense. Mm -hmm. But if you have, okay, there's this one, and there's that one, and there's that one, and there's that one. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of a sudden you've got enough going on there that you're talking about ten or tw twenty days, mm -hmm. and if you take if you take a week to write that software, you mm -hmm. you saved a lot of time. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. And we can spend our time on looking at response. Yes, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, give some thought to that. Okay. Uh, so by Friday, okay. So tomorrow, yeah. you're going to be looking at uh, looking at refine mesh refinement. Is that correct? Uh, I had a calculation. And me mesh refinement. Yes, mesh refinement. Yes, right. Yeah. Right. 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 And are we using? Uh, the, we're using 3,500 psi for the concrete guys. Is that what we're using? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, and, yes. And, and, the, and the thickness of the slab is what five and a half inches. Yes. yes. Okay. So uh, once we get the uh, system put together, mm -hmm. and we start looking at the floor system, uh, one thing I'm going to ask you guys to do is let's look at uh, concrete strength variation. In other words, 4,000 psi, mm -hmm. 3,000 psi. Mm -hmm. 5,000 PSI, okay. 2,500 PSI. Mm -hmm. What difference is it going to make? Okay. You, you follow what I'm saying? Yes. That's a real easy, real easy study okay. in t determining whether the structure, because at this point I don't know how good your asphalt yes. conditions were. Mm -hmm. And so we'll do a, basically a limit study of what we might think could, might be. And if it's not sensitive to those problems, then that's fine, that's good. All right, Steve, you, you're up. For tomorrow's work or today? Whatever. Today's. Oh, today I've just done a, a bunch give of... Give a summary. Oh, today I've done a bunch of... Uh, today I've done a couple of modelings on SAP 2000 and um, SOLIDWORKS. So the results are very promising because they are all very close to the theoretical results. So for SAP 2000, I used... Uh, I need a, a different modelings. So the first, I used a one solid piece of uh, beam element and uh, under self-weight loading and the results very close to the theoretical result by hand calculation. And then I used two beam elements together connected by 
links, and I use the other links to connect two beam elements. And the result is also very close, same loading. And then I use the shell element with uh, rigid links connected to a beam element, which is the, the white flange beam. And also the result is very close. So, but again, I'm going to ask you to do the same thing I've asked. Uh, yeah, I, uh, we need to look at mesh refinement. Right, so, I already put it so down, that yeah. we can determine how sensitive these results right, are to right. this. Okay, right. and then you also need to when we start putting the the, the 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 floors together, let's put our links to match up with the shear Nelson shear right, studs. Right. Okay, so that's got to that's got to be done. All right. So and so you're 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 going to do what for tomorrow? Oh, I want to, I want to, I'm, there's still some uh, problems I have with uh, SolidWorks. You know, there's one model I just couldn't mesh right, okay. right. and I'm going to solve that issue by creating a new model and then put everything together. So what about, what about non-composite? Have you have any problems with that? Have you done anything with non-composite yet? I yeah, know, I mean, no, no problem with, yeah, I mean, it's very easy, just like stupid. I know that, but I'm asking you how good are the answers, though. Very close to the uh, Correct. Hand, hand calculation, okay. yes. I thought you were saying there was some difficulty with that, uh, uh, with a non-composite. Yeah, I think uh, for the non-composite, you give me the result uh, is, uh, oh yeah, non-composite is close, and then uh, composite is uh, a little bit different. Okay. So yeah, non-composite is very close. Yeah. What about composite? Composite? Okay, so uh, composite depends the, the results I just gave you. They are, I mean, if you model it in a certain way, the results will be very close to... Well, I think what you need to do mm -hmm. uh, is, to, is to look at mesh refinement, and then you're going to know what you need to do. But, yes. Because but it's very sensitive to that. can be. It can be, but... Uh, Okay, so I created different models, right? You saw what I just yeah, showed I did. you. Yeah, I did. So some results are not are kind of far away from uh, the uh, theoretical results, and I think I didn't model it right. I didn't choose. Okay. I didn't choose well, right once now. you get your model where you think it's right, yeah, and, and everything's cool, then let's let's look at how many how many how f how close those nodes have to be together. Okay. Now, when you're looking at a beam, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. because the beam is theoretically correct. Right. But when you're looking at a solid, solid shell element uh -huh. coupled with a beam, it does matter. Right. So that's you got to pay attention. Mm -hmm. When you go to that solid shape, mm -hmm. then you have to look at how many pieces do I need to break it up into to get an accurate representation of what's going on there. Right. All right. Yeah. But if you just take beam elements, you could have one beam element. Right, and, right. And, and, and if you knew what the middle node is going to give you, right. you'd be okay. It's the same answer. Yes. Because it's theoretically correct. Yeah. And, and the, I, I built a bunch of models with different coefficients and different yeah. Uh, yeah. shapes or, you know, yeah. like connections. And the results I got that are close, you know, I yeah. I think they're the right ones. The closest <laughs> theoretical ones. Well, you know, the, there, there, there's some they're not. Yeah. The beam element is nothing but a structural stiffness system. It's not a approximation. It's an exact. Yes. And so when you put that with another beam, you're going to get exact. But when you put it with respect to a solid, then the solid is not exact. It's an approximation. And because the way finite element is doing this, it's not giving you perfect answers. Yes. Except, uh, you know, in SAP, there are three kinds of... Uh, there, there, there's, there, there's, there's, there are different... Uh, there are different elements just for shell elements. There's shell, plate, and membrane. I know that. So if I use plate, then it's not correct. If I mean, it's, I don't, I'm going to say it's not, I don't know if it's correct, but the, 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 the results are very different from... Uh, but it's because of the refinement issue. When you, when you find that, refine that bugger up, you're going to find that it's going to converge okay. if you're modeling it correctly. Okay? Because it has, as degrees of freedom, uh, the, the, the plate... Uh -huh. I don't believe has any axial load. It only has, I believe, transverse moment, uh -huh. and torsion, and shear. Okay. And and so you've got to match those with the beam element of the same degrees of freedom. If you don't, you're going to have a problem. Okay. And so you've got to make sure that the things you're putting together, beam to whatever, uh -huh. has the same degrees of freedom. If it doesn't, you're, you're not going to get any decent answers. 
Uh, okay. If you do, it's, ac it's an accident. I'll definitely yeah, look it up. Okay, same with the shell. Be very careful because the shell element, now sap is supposed to be able to, to correlate those degrees of freedom between the beam and, and, and the shell. But be very careful about that issue because keep in mind that the shell has a vertical, has a, in other words, it has, it doesn't have moments. It has forces. I mean, it has displacements and angles. You cannot resist moment. Well, it resists moments, okay. but, but depends on how, what that element looks like. If the element is a solid, kind of like a brick, uh -huh. then the degrees of freedom are only two, only x, y, and z. But your beam doesn't isn't x, y, and z. It's x, y, and z in angles. So that, so it's not matching up. So be careful on how your degrees of freedom match when you put these elements together. It's really really important that you you recognize that. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh, for shell elements the default setup for it and I just use it and then connect it with the the beam element the result is very close but for for the uh, default setup for plate elements then uh, I just put it on you know I just connect it with a beam element the, the result is not as close like one magnitude apart like ten times apart it probably has to do with what I'm just telling you yeah, I mean, I might need to change. Uh, so, so I would do a little bit of studying about putting, and, and maybe even contact SAP and say, what provision do you have to make these two two kinds of elements compatible? Okay. So, so that tell them what you're doing and whether that plate element will work for that. Okay. The other thing to be careful of, I mean, we don't have to deal with it here, but a plate element has to be horizontal. So, it can't be this way can't be at an angle. Shell element can. Because okay. shell element can be at an angle. It can be any orientation it needs to be. But a plate element can't. It needs to be horizontal. So, yeah, so my suggestion is we stick with shell elements. Well, the reason we want to look at a plate element is it takes way less amount of time to, to analyze it with a plate element. Oh, so play elements, okay. So if, the, if, if we can make it work and work well, then it may be worth the time to give us an indication of a lot of behavioral things okay. and spin, instead of spending a huge amount of time trying to get answers out and we don't need that kind of accuracy. What we like to do is maybe identify those things that need to be studied carefully. Mm -hmm. So preliminary solutions, play element might get us where we want to go way better. You see what I'm okay. saying? Okay, okay. All right. Uh, so, okay. So, take a look at the composite versus non-composite versus those elements, and I'd, I'd like to see your solution for SAP. Like I've asked, the same thing for fun. Okay. All right. And I would suggest today, uh, after I walk out of here, go ahead and, and take a picture of your SolidWork model, your uh, SAP model, your Abacus model on the screen. Put it on film. All right. Oh, put it on film. Yeah. Okay. So that everybody can see. Okay. Right. And then, in, in a, and then in a few days, when we get a little bit farther along, we'll put it into the smart classroom, and then really kind of take a picture okay. of it there, so so we can all see what okay. it looks like. Okay. okay. You want you want you want me to, to use the camera, to take pictures of uh, of the screen. Of screen. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you can back when I walk out of here, you can shut that off, turn it around here, okay. and put it at your screen, so you can communicate what your 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 a person seeing, okay. you know, so that you got got it documented. Okay. All right. And then, you know, we're not there yet. We're we're just doing a lot of preliminary work right now, so it doesn't matter whether we have the correct answer or not. What it does matter is our process that's going we're going through to get where we want to go. Okay. You know, yes. and that's what we're trying to document right now. Okay. okay. Are you with me? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. you guys, okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. So thanks.